Niagara Falls, Ontario, famous around the world as a tourist destination, a magnet for 20 million visitors a year. But Niagara Falls is a real city, and it has plenty of real city crime. Fortunately, Niagara Falls also has a brilliant and determined crime fighter, a police dog named Bricks. He and his partner, Gord Nash, work for the Niagara Regional Police Force's canine unit. It's work that Bricks loves. If he could talk right now, he'd probably say, let's get out on patrol. He likes nothing more than to go out on patrol. That's, that's life for him. As a police team, Bricks and Gord are constantly together. Their boss, Staff Sergeant Bob Wright, is very happy about that. Gord and Bricks are an excellent team just because they share similar characteristics. Bricks has endless energy and endless desire. He continues and continues and continues to work. And Gord is the same kind of police officer. He is tenacious. Okay, it looks like the garage is clear. So what we'll do is we'll broadcast the vehicle, we'll check the area, see if anything turns up from there, okay? Working with the police service dog, you tend to dig more. You tend to go in those areas where there is a lot of danger, where there is a lot of break-ins and robberies, because you know you have a backup right here. And he didn't fail me, never has, never will. Bricks and Gord are not only together during the working day, they're together all the time. Want your ball? <laughs> now he's gonna walk backwards. He spends so much time with the dog. You know, tonight we go in, we work a 12-hour shift together. He comes home with me, um, you know, I feed him. We go out for walks together. So you actually spend almost more time with your police service dog than you do with your own family. Uh, you spend so much time with them. Uh, my children spend time with them. My daughter really likes playing with them. You know, he goes out in the backyard and he rolls over on his back and she scratches his tummy and grooms him with the brush. A great police dog like Bricks is a highly trained professional, capable of knowing how to act whether he's on duty or off duty. You take him out on the street and he can tell when it's time to do his job and it's time to go to work. At home, he's a different dog. You put him in the police car and he puts on his game face and he's off to work. Hey you! Stop right there! You're under arrest! Stop right there! We stop! Bricks looks dangerous and it works. His job is to chase down a suspect and hold him for Gord by looking fierce, not by biting. Should the suspect stop, throw his hands up the air, and remain completely motionless, the dog is trained to stand off. In other words, he'll come up, sit, guard, and bark at the person until I can catch up and make the arrest. Yeah. Bricks has a great effect on suspects. A lot of people are willing to fight with a police officer but they do not want to fight with a police dog. As Gord's backup, Bricks is trained to be physically intimidating for the times when that's necessary. The training is for the safety of Gord or a citizen, and great care is taken to make sure Bricks isn't needlessly Jay, aggressive. Turn to your right and start walking away from me. Do it now. <laughs> Bricks barks a lot, but rarely is he commanded to bite. That's why we train our dogs on what's called ball reward. He believes that throughout his training, he's going to get the ball as a reward, not a bite. Sit. Sit. Bricks can sit there and bark and bark and bark at you. You give him his ball, and the first thing he does is he leans up against you and wants you to scratch his side. It's a game to him. At the same time, his tail's wagging. As soon as the exercise is over, he's right up there and he's your best friend. It's not like he's aggressive to everybody or he wants to go up and bite everybody. It's not like that. Bricks's intelligence and acute senses can be the difference between life and death for Gord and his fellow officers. If I'm chasing somebody from a break and enter or a robbery, I don't know if that suspect's going to give up. I don't know if he's going to go around the corner and be waiting for me. Even in a building filled with smoke or tear gas, Bricks can still think and function. If it's needless to send the dog into a situation where he could be harmed, I won't do it. If it's a situation where an officer's life is at stake, 
then that's the dog's job. In all the confusion of a crime scene, Brix is capable of finding a criminal and alerting Gord. His job is for our safety. Brick's job is to look after myself and look after the other officers on the street. You can see that he's watching out for me. I didn't see this gentleman walking up the street. He saw him. The guy looked over here and Brick's lit up. That's what he's for. He's doing exactly what he's trained. But constant surveillance can take its toll, even on Brick's. When Brick's comes home from work, he's given his time alone. He doesn't need to have that extra stress of watching over me and uh, keeping his game face on as the police dog. I never do any training in my backyard. The most I'll do is throw the ball for him to fetch it and bring it back. But that's the extent of it. He doesn't do any other training at home. When he's at home, it's his time to relieve the stress and get away from the job. And he needs that. And I need it too. When Bricks is working, He's constantly called on to use his brain as well as his bark to know who's a threat and who isn't. The big thing to do is never allow mistakes to happen. Always be prepared for how you want the dog to react. A good example of it, I was on my way to do a public relations detail here in Welland. On the way to that, uh, a, a robbery had occurred in town. We went on the track through the robbery and two members of the media happened to show up, obviously heard it on the scanners. The member of the media that was there has a very awe-inspiring picture of the dog just prior to um, the apprehension of this criminal. And you look at that picture with bricks uh, at the end of the line barking and growling at the suspect that's on the ground. Uh, it really puts a picture in your mind of a police dog and how they can be, uh, as fearless as they can be. Less than an hour after that incident, I went to the school. I was with a bunch of grade students, uh, approximately seven, eight, nine, ten years of age, all around us, really tight. Before I even had a chance to react, uh, a young girl with Down syndrome that was in the crowd came out of the crowd and moved right forward and threw her arms around bricks. Uh, another member of the media was there and took a picture of it. Uh, that made the newspaper, a large eight by 10 picture of this girl giving Bricks a hug. Bricks knew there was no threat there. And he allowed this girl to wrap her arms around his neck, give him a big hug and a kiss. And basically, it showed two faces of a police service dog. Both pictures made it in the newspaper, into the same paper, two different cameramen. Sometimes, Bricks has used his intelligence in ways that no amount of training can account for. One time, it saved Gord's life. Bricks has come to uh, my aid numerous times. Uh, one in particular was a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a, a lady who had her car stolen, and heading into that area, the stolen vehicle that was just broadcasted on the police radio passed me. With Bricks in the back seat, Gord turned and started a high-speed chase that ended a few miles later at a deserted farm. When the suspect fled, it was Brix's speed that brought him down. I quickly tried to move in. I called the dog off and went into a position where I was going to handcuff the suspect and take him under arrest. Gord had told Bricks to stay put. Now don't move, or you're gonna get bit again. Do not move. What Gord didn't know was that the suspect had both pepper spray and a large knife. At that point, when Bricks saw the altercation taking place, he immediately, without command, moved back in and took control of the individual. Bricks had saved Gord's life. Constable Nash released his police service dog ordering the dog to chase and apprehend the fleeing driver. Gord received an award for his actions that day, but in his heart, he knew who else should have been there. If it wasn't for Bricks, it never would have happened. And it's quite obvious that way. He's the one who really deserves the award, not me. Working with Bricks is uh, such a thrill and an enjoyment to do on a daily basis. I hope he's around for a lot of years. There's always that chance that he could get hurt. My first police service dog was only on the road for less than a year before he was injured and unable to continue his career. But I've 
been blessed with to have a, another dog such as Brex that has such uh, good qualities. He's a very hardworking dog. There aren't many dogs who can do what Brix does every day, protect the life of his partner and help keep his community safe. hills beyond Salt Lake City, Utah, lives a very special dog and his owner, Kathy McNulty. Meet Kiyoshi, an Akita with not one, but two important jobs. One of Kiyoshi's jobs makes it necessary to put up with what looks like the beauty treatment of a pampered pet. But that's not why it's being done. Really keeping the ears fresh, getting rid of any excess uh, wax. This is chicken flavored toothpaste. And this uh, last gel I'm using sort of has a minty taste so that he's not reeking of chicken if he gives someone a kiss. What's all this for? Well, Kyoshi's not an ordinary Akita. He is Dr. Dog. Kyoshi's a therapy dog, and he's a regular down at the University of Utah Hospital. Once a week, Kyoshi takes people's minds off their troubles. Today, Mrs. Rivera, who's having chemotherapy, has made a special request to see Dr. Dog. Hi, Mrs. Rivera. Uh, how are you guys? I'm very good. This is Kiyoshi. And I heard you had Akitas before. Yes, I have. I've had three of them. Kiyoshi's passion is therapy work. It's where he excels. Um, he seems to know what people need. One of Kiyoshi's strengths is his calmness. He not only distracts people, he seems to soothe them. This is particularly important in the tense atmosphere of a surgical waiting room. Everyone here is worried about a loved one, and it helps ease the stress to see an Akita with a frog toy on his back. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy McNulty, and this is my Akita Kiyoshi. And Kiyoshi is a surgery waiting room dog. His favorite area of work is working with children. Rarely does he attempt to pull me somewhere, but if he sees a child, he does take a little liberty and, you know, tries to get me to let him go over to the child. He's a, a gentle dog. He is um, a low-key, sort of a couch potato of a dog. He seems to know what they need, and he's able to give it. Do you like dogs? Yes? Let me show you the softest part of him. Feel right there. Slowly, Kiyoshi works his magic. The tension in the room goes down a notch as people get interested in this big, friendly dog. It's like all dull and stuff, and then when he came in here, he's all, everybody like changing to happy, like being happy and stuff, excited. Kiyoshi's made a big impression on 14-year-old Josh. Josh is here with his grandmother, waiting while his mom undergoes brain surgery that is lasting most of the day. Until Kiyoshi walked in, Josh and his grandmother had nothing to do but wait and worry. Josh even gets to try out a few commands. Kiyoshi, stand. Oh, so <laughs> This dog has been the best thing in the world for Josh today because he's been really upset. He, uh, I mean, his mother is his whole life. They're just for each other. They're always there. So that dog right now has given him a real release. I'm certainly glad they brought it up here. It's been really good for him. <laughs> oh, I think he's found a new friend. It's happened again. Kiyoshi's calm presence and honest goodwill have brought relief to the surgical waiting room. That's what Dr. Dog is there for. Go ahead. Come on, let's go. After their long day at the hospital, Kiyoshi and Kathy get some good news. Josh's mother's surgery has gone well. She'll soon be in the recovery room. It's a happy moment, and Kiyoshi gets some well-deserved thanks. It was good to see you. 
Yeah. See you too. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. See you, bye. Kathy and Kiyoshi live together on a farm outside of Salt Lake City. I found uh, Kiyoshi in Northern California. I had been looking for an Akita to join our life, and the minute I laid eyes on this pup, I knew I had to have him. He was handsome. His personality appeared to be unflappable. Very, very social for a puppy. The two have been together for seven years now. I've had animals all my life, and I've trained animals. And I feel once in someone's lifetime, they are lucky. If they meet an animal that completely owns their heart and soul, um, Kiyoshi is such an animal. Kiyoshi's a live and let live sort of guy. Just look at who he lives with. Kiyoshi shares this house with his sister, who's a standard poodle and a 23-year-old cat, and an African gray parrot, and um, of course the two horses we have here who aren't in the house but are definitely a member of the family. Okay, and uh, they all get along sit. wonderfully. They support each other. At night you'll find everyone that can get into our bed, in bed, cuddling together, giving swapping kisses, that kind of thing. Go get it! Life at the farm recharges Kiyoshi's batteries. Hooray, 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 and that gives hooray. him the energy he needs for his second job. Once a week, Kiyoshi and Kathy head down to Benyon Elementary School, where Kiyoshi's spearheading an innovative program. Kiyoshi's calm presence is put to use helping kids learn to read. Let's go. As usual, everyone's glad to see Kiyoshi, and he fits right in. For these kids, Kiyoshi's not just a dog, he's a reading assistance dog, and the books are right up Kiyoshi's alley. Oh, taxi dog, that looks interesting. And smart dog. dog the kids here have problems with their reading skills, and that can mean constant public humiliations, which is where Kiyoshi comes in. I think when uh, a human reads with a child, even if we try to be patient and not be overly corrective, the child knows we have expectations and they don't want to let us down, where they are not afraid to, to sound out the words and struggle the when world. they're reading to a dog. What, what was going on? An, an investigation, more like a raid. He's unjudgmental. He is appreciative you know, of their effort, efforts. And I think he enjoys being read to as much as they enjoy reading to him. This is the most unusual, an unusual situation. But Lydia used to be far behind in her reading skills. Of course, reading to an adult or a classmate could never be as much fun as reading to Kiyoshi. Now, reading has become one of Lydia's favorite activities. Kiyoshi has enormous patience, and his appetite for being read to seems unending. And although he's not the only reason that Lydia's improved her reading skills, her teacher, Chris Andreessen, gives Kiyoshi high marks. Is that it's helped her confidence, boost her confidence. I mean, when she started out in my class, she didn't turn in any work. And by the end of the term, she was turning in more things. She felt more open to express herself in writing and, you know, reading out loud. <laughs> Lydia's increased skills have taken the discomfort out of reading, but it's still nice to have Kiyoshi by her side. Yeah, she's told me Kiyoshi's a very good listener, haven't you? Mm -hmm. That look, he's looking at you now. <laughs> and Kiyoshi doesn't play favorites. He's got time for lots of kids. Diane. Exactly, exactly. That's very good, huh, Kiyoshi? Reading at school was a nightmare for Sarah. No one was near as patient or easygoing as Kiyoshi. Some people just go, like, snicker and, and say, oh, keep reading, and then they tell other people that you can't read and stuff like that. But the dogs can't talk, so they can't do that. After her sessions with Kiyoshi, Sarah can even read in front of other kids. The wind held. The two parrots pulled and pulled and pulled. You've been reading As for Lydia, she's just barreling ahead. Mm -hmm. And today, she gets a special reward. For every 10 books she reads, 
there's something to take home from Kiyoshi. Mm -hmm. and so the paw graft oh. book from oh. Kiyoshi. Yay. An authentic oh, potograph. There you go. Well, you too. Yeah. Kiyoshi's getting used to fame. He's become a local celebrity. But back home, it's time to wind down. After all, a dog with two jobs needs a break. Good night, Kiyoshi. Lots of families have rabbits as pets. But it's not often that the family dog has the rabbits. Ellie is a four-year-old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, a dog that can actually be a hunter. In this case, she's a mom. Sarah Reynolds found the baby rabbits near their nest at the bottom of her Sussex garden. The dead mother was nearby. At first, Ellie was curious. Then something, perhaps the vulnerability of the babies, touched her. And it was from that moment that they started to eat properly. They were very keen. They suddenly found the will to live, really. Sarah teaches music in a nearby school. And if the students look distracted, it's because Ellie and her family go as well. The baby rabbits must be fed goat's milk every two hours. And Ellie gets help from students like Victoria Took. When I first saw the dog with the rabbits, um, Ellie was being very protective of them and looking out to see that no one would hurt them. It was amazing how much she cared for them. These babies can sleep safely, knowing Ellie is on the job. <laughs>